Okay, we're back again at least one more time. Um, and we're still going to talk about um, this idea of, of evidences of proving our faith, something for our faith to stand on that assures us of these things. And so we're going to talk one more time about that this morning. Hey, I have a great surprise for you guys, a great surprise. I, I told you last uh, couple of months ago that uh, this, during this time, this month sometime, I was going to buy donuts. I bought donuts today for everybody. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> I know that you're not going to get to come over here and do it, but I'm going to have donuts this morning. Hey, anyway, you, you remember the time we had a... <laughs> we were we were in class having donuts and um, and we're passing out the donuts and everybody's get we have chocolate milk with it and everything have a good old time and, I'm, and I look over and and Kate and Landon are looking at each other and they're kind of giving a funny look to each other <laughs> so what are you guys doing and they looked at each other looked at me and said man this chocolate milk is tastes bad <laughs> and I looked at it and the date was all as it, it was past the date and it was terrible we had a whole gallon of chocolate milk for our donuts and it, we couldn't drink it and I really felt bad about that <laughs> and anyway if I wanted to if I wanted to prove that story that of what happened in our class you know you can take my word for it and say yeah well that happened yeah but if you really want if you're really having trouble believing that First thing you do is go do some investigation, right? And the first thing you do is go ask Caden Landon and say, hey, did this happen? Oh, yeah, I remember. So we've got some witnesses. Now, the Bible talks about when you get witnesses to things that are going on, it should be two or more, okay? One guy can't stand up and say, yeah, this is what happened. No, no, give me some witnesses. Give me So Caden Landon would say, hey, yeah, this happened. We tasted that milk, and it was bad stuff. I also, in our, our time together in our class situation, we have folks that come in a little late, and one one day there's a bunch came in, you know, a little late, and um, the chair, chairs were were full, and, no, and there was no place to sit, and so we we're kind of scrambling around there. So I got I got after the guys and said, "Look, these ladies need a place to sit, and if somebody's going to stand up during class, it's going to be you because you're going to respect the ladies enough to give them your chair." And you're going to have, or, or take care of them, go get a chair for them or whatever you got to do. But you don't let just them walk in and wonder what to do. You take care of them. And so I, I tried to impress on them the, um, the uh, or you guys, the, uh, the importance of being very respectful to the women, to, to the ladies in our life, being very respectful to them and because of who, who they are and what they are. And, um, <laughs> and you remember one, one, one time Reese came in a little late, no chairs left, and she walked in and just as fast as she walked in, she grabbed a chair that was leaning against the wall and un, unfolded it and sat down there among us. And then she, <laughs> as she was doing it, she looked around at the guys and always sat on the other side of the table. And, and they, she said, uh, she said, oh, you guys are going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and they got in trouble. I told them, I said, hey, you guys, what have I been telling you all this time? Get up and take care of the ladies. What's wrong with you? Anyway, so if you, wanted to, if, you, if you wanted to know if that story was right, if it was correct, you would first, you'd go, go ask Reese, wouldn't you? And say, did this happen? She, yeah, I walked in. I told them they're going to get in trouble, and they did. They got in trouble for not doing what Mike told them to. And so you could, then you could go to the class itself and say, are you in Mike's class? Yeah. Did this happen? Yeah, that, I was there when that happened. And we have an, we have people who can verify that. And we, we look for more than two, more than two people that, that would be witnesses to things like that. So <clears throat> we, we there's a there's a it's an ongoing thing that we we try we 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 want to come up with witnesses to things that the things that happen. So here we are. We're um, we're talking about scripture. We're talking about Jesus, how he came and died for us and how he lived, and how he, he, he died, and rose again, and everything, well, you know what, I, I want to have some witnesses, now, if I'd seen it, well, we talked about that last week, about, no, if you don't, if you don't believe Moses and the prophets, you're not going to believe if someone come back from the dead, you're not going to believe that, so we want some witnesses, okay, so in 1 Corinthians, there's a definition of what the gospel is, and um, Paul says this, he said, I, I taught you the whole gospel, the whole thing, he said, First, and he says first right there in in in, in uh, First Corinthians fifteen chapter or chapter fifteen verse three, I delivered unto you first that Christ died for your sins, and then 
I delivered to you. He was buried and that he rose again the second of the third day. Now, that's usually where we stop and say, that's the gospel. There you go. There you have it. But there's more to it. And it's really exciting when you look at it because he says this. He says, and in, in chapter, uh, chapter 15, verse 5, he says, and that he was seen by Cephas, and he was seen by over 500 people at one time. Some of them are still alive. Go talk to them. Some of them are st most of them are still alive. Some of them have died, but some, most of them are still, go talk to them. They, he, he, he appeared to them, and then later he says, and he was seen by the 12, the, 12, the apostles. Now, it's kind of strange to me that he, he, he has this rundown of things. He says, well, first that he, 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 he died, and then he rose again. And you know, this is the gospel he's talking. But he was seen, he was seen, he was seen. He brings home the fact that he was seen by more than two people. Yeah, over 500 people saw him. Now, there are some witnesses we can go to, and witnesses, that's how we know that this stuff is true. That's how we know it's right. They're witnesses. We say, Paul, or we talked about Matthew and Mark and Luke and say, yeah, well, you wrote that down. Yeah, you wrote it, so you wrote the book, but is there any witnesses? Well, yeah, there, at that time, there were over 500 of them. And then Paul says, hey, go talk to them. They're all, most of them are alive. Go talk to them. And so we still have, wit they had witnesses then, and we have recorded of witnesses in our scripture that we can, we can assure, be assured of these things happened. Now, there's another time that uh, the, the, we, we talk about witnesses in scripture, and the whole chapter 11 of Hebrews is about witnesses. And these people, they're listed, we call it the roll call of the faithful. That's just a name we've kind of given it. And it talks about folks of the scripture that... Um, Believe God, and it led them to do certain things. And there's a whole listing of them, the whole chapter. It says, think about, uh, he starts there, and he said, uh, th think about Moses. Think about, uh, he, he talks, starts, starts with Abel, excuse me, and he goes to Enoch. And then he starts, talks about Abraham and Sarah, and a Abraham again, Isaac, Joseph, Moses, the Israelites. And it keeps going on and on and on. Then he gets to the end, he says, what can I say? Just think about, and he has a whole list, Gideon, Barak, Samson, David, Samuel, he has a whole list of people who believe that God was real and they are witnesses to us that the, you know God is real through their lives. But when he says that, here's an interesting thing he says, and this is back down in, in verse uh, chapter 12, the first part of chapter 12, he says this, because we have such a great King James calls it a big cloud of witnesses, but a big gathering, a big, a, 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 since we have this gathering of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight that, and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that God has set before us. <clears throat> since we have all these witnesses, and they're recorded there for us, and we have their account in Scripture we can read about, and they're witnesses and testify that God was real and is real. <clears throat> Excuse me. Since we have this great cloud, this great gathering of witnesses, we should be looking at their lives and seeing how they, how they came to a, a belief and use that as evidence that God is real. And then he says this, seeing that we have this great cloud of witnesses, Let's lay aside everything that's going to hold us back from being what we should be. If we, if we, hey, if we got sports that are holding us back, if you find yourself playing sports and going to the ball field, but you just quite didn't get time to, to read your Bible, you didn't quite take time to, to do any praying, <clears throat> Scripture's telling us this, lay aside those things that are a weight for us being what we're supposed to be, what God wants us to be. And he even calls it easy. He says, lay aside these weights and these sins that so easily, that so easily holds us back from being what we're going to be or what we should be in God's eyes and what he wants us to be. So, and then, then after he gets through saying this, he said, but you want, want you to do this. I want you to focus. He says this. He said, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our, folk, of our faith. So we lay those things aside. So the reason is so we can, we, can, we can run this race, this life that we have to live in a way that God wants us to live and lay aside 
those things that so easily get in our way, so easily get in our way. All right, so you guys study those, those, those um, names and go back and read their account and see how they came to a, a belief and an understanding in God and how, how he was real to them. And we can have uh, witnesses that, um, that, that show the same thing. Now, there's one other place that witnesses is used in scripture and it's talking about you and me. If you believe this God stuff is real, and if you believe that um, Christianity is, is, is based on the death, the burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you know that because we have such a faith based on these evidences we've been talking about, now you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to be a witness yourself. And when you have the chance, when you have the opportunity, and then you, you, then you tell your friends, and you tell people about it and say, hey, I know this stuff is real because of this. And here's what happened here. Here's what Christ is to me. And here's what happened to me in my life. So be, be willing to do that. Be willing to, to be bold enough to stand up and say, hey, I know this stuff's real. I know it is because we, we Mike talked about it for three months. <laughs> Seems like three months, doesn't it? We're going to get off of it for, for, for too long. We're going to talk about a few things in nature. And all you guys have told me that, that you like the nature part real good and talk about some of the animals and how weird they... Oh, excuse me. They're not weird, but the, the 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 curious way that God created them, so that it shows His handiwork in those things. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're getting excited about getting back into our worship together and classes and stuff. And I understand that. Uh, I think Terry said last week it'd be another two weeks, so we'll see what happens. So keep keep listening. But keep, but, but but above all things, you guys keep keep um, studying and keep reading your Bibles. Keep praying. And don't don't start being don't start being a pain in the neck. I know that if anybody lived with me, they'd say you're such a pain in the neck because I just find a lot of spare time. So anyway, you guys do what you need to, and and be the person you ought to be. But do this: lay aside those things that are so easily distracting you from being what you ought to be. And we'll get together. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I forgot, and I wasn't getting going to say it this time. But you guys work on your self-control so I don't have to say, who's tapping on the table? Who's kicking the, who's, who's making that noise? Hope I don't have to say that we get back together. Anyway, take care of yourself and I'll hope to see y'all very soon. See ya.